So here we go. We are going to now draw So tell me how many sigma bonds and how many pi bonds do we have in this molecule? Three sigmas and one pi. Three sigmas and one pi. Sigma from your carbon hydrogen, sigma from this other carbon hydrogen. Inside of your double bond, there's one sigma, one pi. So in total, we have three sigmas, one pi. All right? Hmm? You got it? All right, so if I were to draw this out for us to see exactly what this looks like, you have your carbon and your oxygen. In your carbon and your oxygen, you have your sigma bond. You have your pi bond, then you have your sigma bonds, which are two hydrogens, and you have your two lone pairs on oxygen. No, you don't need to know how to draw this. Okay? So this is what this looks like. In reality, this is how your electrons are situated. When we draw something like this, this is actually what your electron density and electron clouds look like. Alright? So if we look at acetylene, how many single sigma and how many pi bonds do we have in a setline? Four sigma, one, uh -huh. three sigma, two pi. Three sigma, two pi. Three sigmas, two pi. You have your sigma for your CHs, that's two. Inside of your triple bond, there's one sigma and two pi. So if we were to now draw this in terms of seeing where your electron clouds are, this is what we end up having. We have our sigma bonds. Here we have our pi bonds coming together. Your pi bonds, one is going to be in up top, one is going to be vertical, one is going to be horizontal. And putting everything together, this is what we come up with. Alright? Here's a question for us. Predict the bond angles around each carbon in acetonitrile. This is acetonitrile. So this is carbon 1, this is carbon 2. What are the bond angles around carbon 1? How many things are bonded around this carbon? Four. Four. One, two, three, four. So what is the bond angles for, what family does that put this carbon in? Tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. What's the angles for tetrahedral? 109.5. This carbon, carbon 2, how many things are bonded around carbon 2? Two? Two. 2. What family does that put us in? Uh, linear. What's my linear. bond angle? One. That's what I got you. Next question. Des describe the hybridization at each carbon. Carbon 1, what's the hybridization here? SP3. SP3. Carbon 2? SP. SP. That's what I got too. Next question, determine the number of sigma and pi bonds in this molecule. Four sigma? Mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, five sigma, two pi. Four sigma? Five sigma, two pi. What do you think, what's this bond here? Sigma. This one, Sigma. this one, Sigma. this one, Sigma. inside here, what is this? And? So how much in total? That's what I got to. So don't be shaking your head and telling me no. <laughs> yeah, sure. The SP3 is um, that 
the hybrid for the first carbon? Carbon one, yes. Okay. okay. That was it? Okay. Alright. Resonance structures. Resonance structure, as we know, is simply the delocalization of our electrons around the central atom. Okay? All your dominant Lewis structures, these are your resonance structures. Alright? They the total of your resonance structures will give you what your molecule actually looks like. So here we have, what's the name of this? Uh -huh. What is it? Nitrate. 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 What is the Lewis structure for nitrate? Uh, N. N. Trios on the side. Three oxygens on the side. Now, the compound that we did earlier, 
this compound here, this is formaldehyde. So does formaldehyde have resonance? Mm -hmm. No. Because it's a yeah. It does? It does. It's, it's a double bond. You have a double What What allows you to have resonance? Double bond. Double bond? Double bond. That's it? Triple bond. No. Nope. So this, just having a double bond, just having one double bond allows you to have resonance?
you end up making a bond when they come together. If they are out of sync with each other, they end up going to repel each other and you're going to make something like this and this is called an anti-bonding. So you have two things that form when you have two atomic orbitals coming together to make a molecule. You have your bonding orbitals and you have your anti-bonding orbitals. You have some things that you need to know. What, which orbital are you are coming together to make this bond? Is it a pi or is it a sigma? Okay. So if your two s orbitals coming together, what bond are you gonna? What type of bond are you gonna make? Sigma. You're gonna make a sigma. So you have your sigma one s bonding, which will always be lower in energy than your anti bonding, and you end up with your sigma star. This is how we signify that it's an anti-bonding anti -bonding by adding this star. So you have sigma star 1s. Do we get that? Okay, so here's the things that we need to know for drawing our molecular orbitals. The first thing you need to do is know your electronic configuration, not just your valence electron, but the entire electronic configuration. Then you need to do, you have to describe if your molecule is homoatomic or heteroatomic. What does homoatomic mean? Same thing. Same thing. What does heteroatomic mean? Different. Different thing. Now, if you are if you are, if your molecule is homoatomic, your atomic orbitals for each will be on the same level. If you are heteroatomic, your atomic orbitals will be staggered. Do we get that? And the one that is lower in energy would be the most electronegative. Do we get that? Once you do that, then you can fill in your atomic orbitals as best you can. The same way you filled up your atomic orbitals, is the same way you're going to fill up your molecular orbitals. Alright? So here we go. First question. Hydrogen gas. What's the first step in drawing my molecular orbitals? Balance. Balance. Yep. Nope. Nope. Well, that's not the first step. No balance. Find the number of valence electrons. Valence electron, but I want you to write the entire electronic configuration. So how many hydrogens do you have here? Two. 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 So you have hydrogen one and hydrogen two. Mm -hmm. What is the electronic configuration for each hydrogen? One S one. For both of them, right? Yes. One S one. One S one. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now this is how we're going to draw our molecular orbitals. So you have a space for each of your atomic orbitals. Your middle section, this is going to be your molecular orbitals. This is where your molecular orbitals are. And then all you do, you connect them. Right? The outsides, you have a line outside. That is going to be where your atomic orbitals are going to sit. Inside here, this is your molecular orbitals. So you always start off with that? You always start off with this. All right. Okay, this is the basis for all of our molecular orbitals. Then you're going to start labeling. Alright, so the bottom molecular orbital 
This is your the type of bond that's formed. When you have two S's come together, what's formed? What type of bond is formed? Sigma. 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 Which orbital is this sigma coming from? One. One S. One S. So you have sigma one S. This is your bonding. This is your anti-bonding. How do we signify our anti-bonding? You put something on the orbital in order to signify that it's anti-bonding. What do we put? The star. So you have sigma star 1s. Outside here, you have your hydrogen 1, your hydrogen 2. How many electrons are in your hydrogen 1? How many electrons are in your hydrogen 2? One. So these are just placeholders. This is what we're purchasing. Remember, think about how we filled up my atomic orbitals or how we read off my electronic configuration. Where do we start? The bottom. Okay? So think about your teacher's shoe shopping fetish. All right? Where do we start? Pay less, right? Your sigma 1s, that's your pay less. How many electrons can fit into your, into each of your molecular orbitals? Two. two. So now you have two electrons here. You now purchase your sigma 1s. Do you have any more electrons to play with? No, and therefore this is your molecular orbital. So whatever the energy It's empty. You don't have any money to get up there. Also, oh, you have more than If you have more electrons, then you can you can you can shock it bim. Then cancel out No cancel out, we don't cancel out anything. So what the empty is gonna do with that? The empty is just gonna sit there. Right? That's what I got too. Hmm? All right? Let's do, now, how do we know if a molecule exists? You can draw a molecular orbital diagram, but you don't know for a fact if the molecule actually exists in nature or not. In order to figure that out, we need to find how many bonds will form in between the two atoms. That is called our bond order. We have a formula for your bond order. Your bond order must be greater than zero. How do we find it? It is half the difference of your bonding minus your anti-bonding. So you have your bonding electrons minus your anti-bonding electrons divided by two. So can we find my bond order for my hydrogen gas? How many electrons in your bonding? How many electrons in your anti-bonding? Zero. Divided by two. My bond order is? One. So therefore, hydrogen gas does exist. Uh, does exist. No, it, is, it must be greater than zero. So if it's a half, it will still exist. So if it's negative, it exist. No, there will not be no negatives. Never. So everything is going to exist? No. Not necessarily. There's no negative. There's no negative. Oh, it's just going to be zero. Right. All right. So here, we just calculated our bond order. We know it's one. So let's try another one. Draw the orbital diagram for helium. And then find the bond order. So again, same setup. Very same setup. Okay. So helium 1, helium 2. What's the electronic configuration for helium? 1s2. 1s2. So now we're going to put back our labels. Helium 1, helium 2. You keep the bonds up, the signals. You keep the bonds, because remember, what does this come from? The S. The S, so therefore we start off at 1s. Sigma 1s. Alright? How 
many electrons goes for helium one? Two. How many electrons goes for helium two? Okay. So how many electrons do you have to play with in total? Four electrons. Four. Good. How many can you purchase for your sigma one s? Can you purchase your, your sigma star one s? Yeah. How much? Two. Do we have any more to play with? No. No. Very good. Okay. That's what I got too. Now let's calculate the bond order. How do we get the bond order? So how many bonding electrons do you have? Bonding. Two. How many anti-bonding? Two. Divided by two. Zero. So therefore, what can you tell me about helium two? It does not exist. Yes. So when it exists? When what exists? Helium two? When does it? No. Like when does? If it's great, if your bond order is greater than zero, it exists. No. Go ahead on. The intuition. What is the bonding electrons? Bonding electrons. Minus anti-bonding electrons divided by two. So it's not bonding electrons. Okay. Anti-bonding electrons. Both of them are two. Oh. Yes. I found both of them. Okay. Okay. Now let's do this one. Lithium two. Professor, how is the anti bonding is two over there? How many here? Two. How many here? Two. How many here? Two. How many here? Two. These are where you come from. These are what you purchased. So lithium two plus lithium two, sorry. What is the the electronic configuration for lithium two? One s two two s one. One s two two s one. So we have Li one and Li two. So now each one of your orbitals will have its own diamond. So you have to make one for your 2s now. So your 2s is higher in energy than your 1s. So where is it going to be? On the top or the bottom? Top. Top. So you make another one. Oh. Oh, so when there's a 2s, uh, a 2s2, you make two. Mm -hmm. okay. So you're going to label them the same way, except now this is a sigma 2s. So we have lithium 1, lithium 2. How many electrons goes here for lithium 1? In your 1s? Two. How many goes here for your two s? One. Same thing on the other side. So now you can start purchasing stuff. How many does your one s take? Two. Your one s star. Two. Your sigma two s. Two. Your sigma two s. Sigma star two s. None, because you have no more left. All right. That's what I got too. So let's find the bond order. So now, when we're looking at your bonding, is the bonding for your entire molecule. So how many bonding electrons do you have? Four. Four. How many anti-bonding? Two. Two. Divided by two? Two. One. One or two? Two. One, one, one. You sure, Mohammed? Like, which one is it, Mohammed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. So, therefore, lithium two does exist. Right? Yes. 
your bonding electrons. Your bonding for your 1s has 2. Your bonding for your 2s has 2. How many electrons am I looking at the with? All together, 6 electrons. You have from lithium 1, you have 3. From lithium 2, you have 3. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. For each um, orbital, you have different dynamics. Yes. Okay? Now, for your p orbitals now. Your p orbitals will have, your p orbitals can have how many, well, how many types of bonds? Three. You can have three types of bonds. Sigma and pi. There you go. Sigma and pi. Alright? So, what that means is that you need, how many orbitals do you have for, for your p orbitals? How many rooms do you have in your p? Three rooms, right? So you can ultimately have three bonding and three anti-bonding. Alright? Now, if you have head-to-head -head overlap with your p orbital, what kind of bond are you forming? If you have side to side, pi, and pi. pi. Side to side is pi. All right. So one of your p orbitals will overlap head to head. This will give you a sigma bond. The other two will overlap side to side, and that will give you two pi. So now you need to take into consideration how does this now affect your diamond? All right? For your P, you have three rooms. Do we get that? So now you know in the middle here, you therefore need six of them. Your sigma bond is going to be lower in energy then your pi bond. So your sigma goes down. Then you have your two pi's. Because you have three. In the P you have three rooms, no? You need to take into consideration these three rooms. So now you're going to have the mirror image for your antibody. So you end up with your 2 pi and your sigma tau. And then you connect everybody. So now we're going to label them. What would this label be? Sigma? S. No, this is not an S. This is this sigma what? 2P. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what, what, what about the next two? No, these aren't S's. These are these. Remember, this is your P orbitals. So 1P is sigma, 2P is pi. There you go. So this is pi, 2P. And what's this one? Pi um, star 2p. And this one? Sigma star 2p. Do we get that? What about the left? What left? 2p. What do we mean left side? That's the whole thing here. So this is a label for this one. This is the label for this one, and so forth, and so forth. Alright, so let's take for example, if we have O2. Alright, so we have oxygen 1, oxygen 2. What's the electronic configuration for oxygen? 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So how many diamonds are you going to have? 
three. We have one for two P, one for two S, and one for one S. Your 
your molecule is paramagnetic. If you have doubly occupied orbitals, your molecule is diamagnetic. So what do we have for oxygen gas? Paramagnetic because your highest occupied orbital has single electrons. The highest one. Do we get that? So, so for the next one, the highest one is going to be paramagnetic gas to the next. No, no, no. This is the only highest one. So is that not a part of the same thing? Yeah, but this is the highest one in this one. Okay. So there's no choosing another highest. This is the only highest.